Hello everyone, welcome back. In this session, we are going to take a look at the ink component of the ink and paint material in 3ds Max. So, the first option we are going to see is the ink checkbox. The ink checkbox actually uh, it switches on or off the ink controls. If we switch this off and have a render, we will see that we are missing the tracing lines that had been previously there. And by switching it on, we can have those lines back. Then we have something called the ink quality. Ink quality actually refers to the brush size and the sampling it does. We have a quality, it range from 1 to 3. At a quality of 1, this is what we are going to get. And if we clone this and let's say if we increase this quality till 3 and then have a render. Here, you can see that by comparing these two, by comparing these two, you can see The sampling in these areas, the sampling in these areas as at a quality of 1 we can see there is less sampling and at a quality of uh, 3 we have got more sampling in border lines. At a quality of 3 however uh, the brush sizes change to a almost circular brush and at a quality of 1 we almost have a crosshair that is tracing the line. So that is the where the difference lies basically. Then we have something called ink width. Ink width actually generally is associated with the width of the line that has been traced. So by default it has a value of 2. If we increase it to say a value of 10 and then take a render out of it, you will be able to see that we have get, we are getting much bolder lines, much bolder lines than we had than we had previously. We are going to pop this back, decrease this back to 1 and then again take a render of it. So you can see that we are getting much bolder lines and at a value of uh, ink width of 10. So that is how ink width works. Then we have something called variable width. If we switch this checkbox on, we can have a variation in the uh, in the width of the ink as it traces the contour of the of our character. Let's say we'll set this from 2 to 10, which is our maximum width, and then take a render out of it. Here you will be able to see that how our ink um, ink width changes from uh, a more thicker to a slightly slightly thinner ink and this is how variable value works here. You might be able to see it here. It, it has a thinner, thinner ink uh, width and then it goes on to a thicker one. Then you have something called clamp. Clamp actually forces the ink value to be between the boundaries of minimum maximum value sometimes we are not able to get it so it's advisable to turn that on and uh, we'll take a render out of it and we can see that we are not able to see much of a difference out here because clamp actually clamps the value from zero to uh, sorry from the minimum value to maximum value then also for the width value we can always uh, assign a map to it let's say we'll assign a noise map and change this parameter from um, fractal from regular to fractal and we can change the tiling from 10 10 okay it's 101 sorry 10 tab to 10 okay. so here we can see and now when we are going to render it you'll be able to see that we are going uh, we are having a, a whole different kind of a tracing all over we are getting very good noise in here we, if we switch off just a minute if we switch off variable width and check this box on and then render it still what we are getting is five let's say we change it to uh, change it from one to five and render it so you can see that we are getting uh, much of a noise out here because uh, we have applied a noise map to the ink width attribute and the attribute is changing according to the to the map applied to it and here we can always use a blend the spinner as in uh, the paint parameter you can always use the spinner to blend this map to this particular value now after that we have something called the intersection bias intersection bias is uh, refers to a bias that happens to the artifacts that may happen when two objects intersect with each other likewise here what is happening is we have two objects these are the eyes and the and character are two different objects and we are having certain artifacts when these two objects are actually intersecting with each other intersection bias actually is used to remove these unwanted artifacts we can either 
increase the value and then render it you can see that we are getting no uh, ink lines out here so we can just lower it a bit approximately 0.2 and even lower maybe and here we have started getting some of it back it actually does is it moves uh, the point of view in a negative and positive direction in order to get the artifacts if we move it in a negative direction what we are going to get is we, we, we are going to get a very much thicker line and if we use it at a zero value it is there, there is no intersection bias we are not getting going to get much point 0.1 is a little too much 0 2 let's try this value and here we are getting some of it in here so that is how intersection uh, bias works with intersecting objects and then we have something called outline uh, let, let me switch this all of this off so that we can concentrate on one thing so we have something called outline outline actually and let me also switch the uh, paint attribute off so we can just get something like this i don't want the noise to be there so let's have it simple straight two pixels yeah so outline is something like uh, you always get an outline of the things we are not able to get any outline of what is in there in here because we can see that the, our, uh, the legs of the character are actually overlapping the other parts of his uh, body but we are not able to see here this is what outline does outline basically traces the outer uh, edge of the body and uh, if we can if you want if you can change this, its color to something let's say pink that's something let's say um, purple blue we'll change something to blue and now you can see that uh, outline is blue in color you can also assign a map to it if you want to like uh, we'll assign uh, something that is easily recognizable let's say a cellular map to it and then we can render it and then you can see that yes the outline has been converted to a cellular uh, the map has been the cellular map has been mapped onto the outline and you can always blend between uh, these two colors using this uh, spinner I use I use a value of 50 and you can see that a color is blending with the cellular map now there is something called overlap overlap if we click uh, check this on overlap actually overlap is something when we have these two objects like i said before we were not able to see the uh, lines of the legs which are actually overlapping is part the other parts of his body but with overlap on what we can see is we can have these lines work for us uh, let's just move it a bit so that more of uh, his parts overlap his body here yeah. yeah. so now while we have turned this on we'll just take a render quick render of it okay and we are not able to see the overlap as yet we are not able to see the overlap because our overlap color is uh, black and we should be able to see it that's because our overlap bi uh, bias is too high to, a to be able to show it so lower this down to let's say approximately 0.2 and then re render it here here we are able to see the overlapping portions the hands that are overlapping and the leg that is overlapping we can we are able to see that it, it is black in color and also we have the option to assign a map to it uh, if we feel like doing it and then we can blend over it let's assign a different color so that it's easily recognizable okay yeah. and now let's assign it a value of 0.1 render yeah the more we are like uh, lowering our bias the more things the overlapping portions we are able to see if we all over this bias till zero we'll be able to see much of the overlap that has that is happening actually in the picture so we'll take this till point one only it will be a bit cleaner yeah and now we have something called underlap in overlap what happens is the per portion the particular portion which is towards the camera has been inked in underlap when you switch on underlap the portion that is away from the camera the particular part that is away from the camera in these uh, in overlap what is happening is the legs that overlap the body part has been inked but in underlap the portion that is further away from the camera and still it is overlapping with some other part this portion is going to be inked 
so we have our underlap uh, on and we will just take a render and still we are not able to see anything because the color is black and it, it should appear out here that's because our underlap bias is still very low so we'll take it down to 0.1 and then render it and here we are able to see the underlap here are the legs are not being inked but the area besides the legs that is the area that belongs to the other part of the body is actually being inked in here we can always uh, bring it down to zero and have a much more detailed overlapping portion much more detailed overlapping portion and even in here we can bring it down to zero and here here is what we will be able to see okay now we have something called smoothing groups because object has no smoothing groups actually applied to it so we'll just switch this on for a while and take a render of it you'll see that there's no change in it i just switched off the underlap and overlap so that we are able to see it much, see it much clearly you'll see that there's no uh, such color as black to it because uh, the smoothing groups has been applied a color of black so what we can do is we'll select the model select the model and switch off its norms subdivision smooth now you can see that the model has a very aged look to it so now we'll take a render of it now we are able to see actually uh, the bottom part of the character has been applied a smoothing group so we are not able to see it but the other parts we are having a very zigzag cross black lines and this is because we have applied a smoothing group to it so the things where other smoothing groups are applied we, we are able to see the biases over here and we do not have any biases in here and this spinner does not work for the color it, it works actually for the blending between the color and the so we are not able to we are not able to actually change it this is what smoothing group is all about all the different parts every polygon has a different uh, smoothing angle to it and so that is why each line between the different polygons has been inked with a certain ink when we switch on the smoothing groups and lastly we have this attribute of material id we'll switch it off and what material id does is it actually if you have defined certain material ids to your objects it defines the ink borders between them for the time being i like i have defined a material word or id of certain like if um, i'll say a material id of uh, two select id I have defined certain material IDs for certain part of the object. And five, six, so now this is my object and my material editor and my render view. <coughs> now when I have uh, switched this, uh, switch this on, and I'll change my color to something that's uh, more visible. Yeah. And now I'll render this. I've got these lines between these uh, different different places. And this is where the material ID comes into play because all these sections of his, its body, different material IDs, I'm getting all these uh, lines because of that. So you can just, uh, for with the material ID, the inked portion is actually the, uh, the edges between the material IDs. If this is off, you can see that I'm getting all the lines between different material IDs. And if only adjacent faces is on, it will only give the lines that are between adjacent faces in a particular uh, particular object between different material ids like these and if i check this off it will take into account the whole object and even the intersecting object which have different material ids around them and i can get these clean lines and now i will just take this back to black and this is what i am going to get and if i change my outline color to black as well and I'll just position this like so and I'll switch this on and then take a render out so this is what I'm going to get when I use all my attributes for the ink and paint material we can get different kind of effects using this pink ink and paint material this is how the ink and paint material works thank you